Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. Today I'm going to show you how I designed and laser cut my own living wooden hinges using Fusion 360 to get this model of this Mobius strip, which is made out of plywood. I've been interested in experimenting with living hinges for some time now. I've seen some beautiful work that others have done and have finally been inspired to give it a shot. A living hinge in this case is the process of creating very thin cuts in a piece of wood which then allow it to bend and fold. I was able to take a piece of plywood. This is a 3mm plywood. As you can see, it's not very bendy. But after scoring it or putting very thin cuts through it, I was then able to take a strip of wood and then bend it into this Mobius strip model. How cool is that? I'll jump into Fusion 360 in a minute to show you exactly how I designed this. But first, I need to give credit to Orbery.com and Jeremy Baumberg who designed and posted this model. You can actually go on their website and just download the design, which is a DXF file. But instead of just downloading their design, I'm going to show you how to make your own. That way you can apply this technique to all sorts of projects and this is definitely something you can get very creative with. Also, I'll point out that the Fusion YouTube channel has a video on designing living hinges, but that video is an hour and a half long. I'm going to try to do a much more scaled back video, basically just giving you what you need to know to start experimenting. There are many different patterns you can use to create a living hinge. And if you go to the orbery.com website and click on living hinge swatches, you'll get this file with a bunch of different swatch designs. I plan to go back and make every one of these, but for this video, we're going to make the simple straight design, which is this one. It's also the design used in the Mobius strip model. I recreated the design using the sketching environment in Fusion 360 and then exported the file as a DXF. I then imported the DXF into Illustrator. You can also use CorelDRAW or Inkscape and printed to the laser cutter. The result was this incredibly bendy and very flexible piece of wood. Before we jump into our Fusion 360 design, let's take a look at how these cut lines are arranged. Let's say this is our strip of wood. The first cut is made, but it doesn't go edge to edge. There's some space left between the line and the edge of the board. Notice these two gaps. The second line goes edge to edge, but there's a gap in between the line. The second line will have a specific distance from the first line. You can play around with the distances of these gaps to determine how much bend you want your strip of wood to have. And finally, we just repeat that pattern. Okay, let's jump into Fusion now and sketch this design. Here's the Fusion 360 sketch of the design. As you can see, the clasping mechanism here resembles this sort of puzzle piece here on the left and on the right side. And that just kind of snaps together to hold it in place. And then you'll also see my lines here. This is basically what creates the live hinges. And the third thing you'll notice are these construction lines. Now those just set my gaps here. Um, it was easier just to make them and then snap my lines right to them. That way I have these um, gaps here that I talked about earlier that really determine um, how the actual hinges are going to behave. So let's jump into that sketch really quick and you'll see that I made this uh, three millimeters as this gap in the middle and then did the same thing on the bottom. I have a three millimeter offset uh, from the bottom and from the top. So that's just the number I chose, the three millimeters. Um, it worked great for me, but again, you can experiment with those. All right, the first thing I'm going to do here is actually start with a little tip for you, which is a nice tip to know if you don't know it yet. I'm going to select and just um, delete these lines here because that's the part I want to focus this tutorial on is just let's recreate these lines for those hinges. So let me delete the top and the bottom section there. And here's the tip I want to show you. Did you know you can select your sketch, uh, copy it, so I'm going to right click, click copy, and then you can paste it into a whole new design. So I'm going to create a new design here by clicking new design and go to create sketch, choose my plane and then right click and go down to paste. And that's going to bring in that sketch 
into this design here so now I can uh, just work with it. I'm going to go back to my previous design and undo so that I can bring back my line so I have something to reference. All right, let's continue and just make these lines here um, to create our live hinges. So I'll go back to this current design. And the first thing I did, um, since I already have my guides all set up, all I need to do is make the lines. Um, actually, let's delete these. These came over, um, these little points here. I'll recreate them in a second. All right, so we'll go to create, choose line. And the first line basically went from the intersection of my guide here to the top line. And I'll hit escape and then give that a dimension of 60 degrees. Basically, I, I eyeballed it and it looked like it was about 60 degrees. So I'm going to go with that. And now that I have my first line, I'm going to create another line. So let's go grab the line tool again. And this line is going to go from the bottom edge to this guide line here. And I'm going to use my parallel constraint to make it parallel with this first line. And now I want to give it a dimension. So I'll hit D for dimension. But one thing I found out that notice when I click the dimension, it's a perpendicular dimension. So that dimension is, um, you know, the perpendicular distance from this line to this line. And I don't want that because when I go to my pattern, it doesn't dimension it that way. It's going to want to dimension it straight across. So I'm going to hit escape. And what I'm going to do instead is grab a point from my create menu and I'm going to put a point right there where that line intersects that construction line and now I'm going to grab my dimension tool by hitting D and I'm going to mention dimension that point from the end of this line here and I used 1.8 millimeter as a distance and that worked great for me so now you can see that's a straight dimension going across instead of going um, perpendicular Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing up here. So let's grab our uh, line tool. I'll just hit L on my keyboard. I'll draw a line from this construction line all the way to the top line here. And I'm gonna make it parallel to this first line here. And let's grab that point. We'll point from, put a point right there. And then a dimension from the two points here. We'll do 1.8. Okay, now that I have those two lines, or actually the three lines, now I can create my rectangular pattern. So I'll go to create down to rectangular pattern, and I'm going to choose one, two, and three. Click on direction. I'm just going to click any one of these lines here. I'll choose this top line um, to set my direction that I want to go left to right. I'm going to grab that arrow, start bringing it to the right. And for my distance type, I'm going to choose spacing. Uh, distance, you see that that's going a negative number, so it's going to have to be negative uh, is a number I'm going to want to enter. And my distance, I basically want it to be double my gap that I made here. So 1.8 times 2, I can type that equation or I can just do a negative 3.6 there. It's easy math. And my quantity, I did 13, so I'm just going to recreate that. So I'm going to do 13 of those to make that pattern. Click OK. All right, now that I have that, I'm just going to mirror it on this side. So I'm going to uh, hit L for line. I'm going to create a line going up and down. And let's make that vertical. And then click on it, click X to make it a construction line. And what I did is I set the distance between this line here and this point here. And what I want to do is make that 10 millimeters. So I'm going to set that. And let's also make this a construction line here. Oh, it is a construction line, it's just that the dimension is, whoa, whoa, okay, let's fix that. Um, sometimes your dimension line goes on top of the construction line, and it's difficult to see that it's actually a construction line, so let's move this down here. Okay, now that I have my dimension there, I'm just going to do a mirror, so I'm going to go to create down to mirror, and I'm going to drag from left to right to just select over these um, angled lines here and I'm going to hold shift and do the same thing on the bottom and I should have 39 objects and then my mirror line is going to be my construction line and I went ahead and created this um, set of lines here I'm going to click OK and I'm just going to repeat that process drawing a line straight down let's make it vertical let's make it a construction line let's give it a distance um, from the nearest 
point here, which is this line here. I'm going to make that 10 millimeters. And now I'm going to go to create down to mirror. Select this bunch here, being careful just uh, to select or intersect just those lines. Um, and you're selecting from right to left. Hold shift. I'm going to do the same thing here in the bottom. Again, 39 selected. My mirror line is going to be this vertical line I made. And it recreated that same pattern here. And that's how I made those lines. So that's how easy it is to do those patterns in Fusion 360. Now you have to be careful when you're creating patterns of sketch lines. Depending on your computer, if you don't have a strong enough machine, it may slow down a bit. But I really had no problems um, creating at least these many lines. So, okay, I just wanted to show you how I approach this and what worked for me again the guidelines here are just uh, what i chose you can experiment with those to get different results on how you know bendy your wood uh, gets um, to export this what i did was here let's finish this sketch here and all you have to do is click here uh, expand so you see that sketch right click and i went to save as dxf choose your folder i'll give this a name Uh, click save and then all I have to do is import this into whatever software I'm using to send to the laser um, in this case let me open it up because I want to show you one more thing I'm gonna open this up in uh, Illustrator so those of you that are using Illustrator you'll kind of see my workflow here and how I'm sending this to uh, an epilogue laser it's kind of very specific for this software and that machine so I wasn't gonna go into it but I do want to point out that there actually is an issue that you're going to have to deal with with those construction lines. So I'm just going to go to file open here and let me grab that file. So I have it set to original size scale one to one millimeters because that's what I designed with and I'll click OK. And here's what I wanted to show you. So those construction lines actually come in. Now you have the option of either deleting them in Fusion 360 or mainly what I would do is I would probably just um, project into a new sketch and project everything besides the construction lines. But in this case, it's actually easier just to delete the construction lines here in Illustrator. So um, I just simply delete all these lines that I don't need. And for sending this to my epilogue, I basically would select this, set my stroke to 0 0.001 inch, and then uh, move it into place. You know, and then I'm all set to go ahead and laser cut this. All right, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you did, hit that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions on my design or just the general process I use for creating the living hinges, uh, leave those in the comments below. And if you are someone who's experienced with designing and creating living hinges and you have some tips for us, uh, go ahead and leave those tips below. Uh, we'd love to read them. All right, guys, I will see you next week.